tonight on Planet. <laughs> Zaya spent a good part of her day at the Singularity Summit. This is where leaders from various emerging fields get together to share ideas. Things like artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, digital medicine. Today we are taking a ride into the future. I'm here at the Singularity U Canada Summit. There's 1,200 people here. It's incredible. They are showing off the latest and greatest technology. Okay, these days we're all used to technology offering a bit of a helping hand. Today I'm here with Chris. He's the CEO of Applied Brain Research and also a Canada Research Chair in, what is it? Theoretical Neuroscience. Just theoretical neuroscience. And today, I mean, you've come up with an industrial robot arm that's actually quite smart. So what, is this, what does this do? Uh, so what this does is uh, right now it's using a kind of machine learning called deep learning to track this little Santa Claus. Okay. And it's figuring out exactly where it is in space and sending that information to this arm, which is uh, very soft, and, you know, so you can move around, you can bump into it if you want. What's uh, sort of more interesting about this robot, it's not the fact that it can follow a target around, um, but actually we can give it a challenge. So if uh, we hand it a hammer, right, so the fact that it's nice and soft to move around means it's safe, and of course, if you're going to give a robot a hammer, you want it to be safe. Of course, you always do. That's right. I don't trust industrial robots with hammers, generally speaking. Probably a good policy. So uh, when we have it move now, it's going to miss because we basically put a big mass in its hand. It doesn't really know. It's like picking up a jug of water that's full and you think it's empty. So you're tricking it. So yeah, you're tricking it. But you'll see that fairly quickly what it's doing is it's figuring out how to change its own controller. It's like learning what is different about its arm and uh, using that knowledge to now being able to move accurately. So how, again, is, it how is it doing that though? How, how has it figured this out? Yeah, we've actually built a controller, uh, you know, like your brain controls your arm, we've built a piece of software that controls this arm. And in that controller, we've replicated a part of the brain called the cerebellum. And that part of the brain learns on the fly, you know, how to basically do a better job of moving our arms around and the same thing is going on in this robot. Very cool. Okay, so what kind of applications do you see for something like this then? Well, I think long term, you know, because it's safe and dealing with fairly sophisticated environments that we uh, think it could be used for long term service robots. So you want somebody to do your laundry and you have a robot come into your laundry work in the kitchen. These are very dynamic and complicated environments. Well, certainly looks like it's going to be very handy. Give me this, <laughs> handyman. Give it, give it back, give it back, give it back. <laughs> 